I am autistic, and so, you know, I, I don't tend to use and deploy a lot of subtextual communication, but there is a little bit to the former video, but because of my absolute disdain for leaving anything really unsaid, I will translate, you know, the video that I made before that I, you know, titled about my deep dive into, like, my feelings towards, you know, the and my attraction towards goth women, you know, so I'll just, I'll, I'll translate it into, you know, to surface what it was not said, but man, my partner, I am and have been smitten with for years. I didn't really, you know, I, the temptation has long been to say that this was some kind of choice that I made, but the truth of the matter was that this, you know, romantic experience that I've been through was one in which I just could not fucking help myself but fall in love with that person. It's been like 10 years. Um, we have a very, very close relationship. We, it, it's harmonious even, you know, to such a huge extent that like, it took about seven years in before we even got in anything like an argument that escalated to the point where anybody would even call it a fight. I mean, we did have our disagreements, which you could call arguments, but they weren't, you know, heated or passionate arguments. They were sort of like detached disagreements that were taking place between the two of us where obviously we still loved each other, but didn't quite see eye to eye, you know, it wasn't, it was, but it wasn't something that was such a big deal that it would, you know, us disagreeing about would make us like, you know, split apart or anything. It just didn't matter to us enough. It wasn't really worth it. You know, it was, it was things that were like the fact that she wanted me to learn like, you know, fr French or European languages. And I was more interested in like Asian, like Japanese. And, you know, th those were the, the sorts of things that we had our little small, you know, scale disagreements about. She would be pointing out that, you know, you could spend years trying to learn some of those Asian languages and still not really have learned all that much. And, you know, then plus you would literally love European society and yet you would literally hate living in Japan because of how, you know, strict it is and perfectionist it is and everything else. And it was just kind of like fair points. But, you know, I'm still interested in the culture over there to a huge extent. You know, some of the cultural, the cultural exports of their country are of great interest of mine despite all the flaws of japanese society but you know if you want to you, you know you some of the best critics of japanese society are japanese themselves like the author of a silent voice you know it definitely is not a perfect country it did it, it tries to be and you know that's part of the problem with the country in a big way i mean you know, obviously a perfect country would not be perfectionist as far as its culture is concerned, because, you know, perfectionism is a standard that's ridiculous that nobody can actually live up to, no matter how much they try. And faulting yourself for failing to be perfect is just setting yourself up to constantly blame yourself for things that it's absurd to blame yourself for, you know, <laughs> like give yourself a little bit of credit, you know, and let yourself off the hook on that one. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, but... Yeah, I mean, we, we, we definitely kind of do see eye to eye, but kind of, you know, it's still like, I'm so interested in, in the, the cultural exports, I'm still curious about the language itself. But then those were the things, those were the kinds of disagreements that we had before that. I think like, you know, up until maybe like sometime back, like a couple of years ago, like we didn't really have anything that we, we considered a fight. And even now it's like at that kind of level where it's like, if things get heated, it's kind of like, I'll go take a breather or, or like as the, the longer the, the heated discussion goes on, the, the more likely I am to just break down ultimately and lose resolve and, and then just end up apologizing. Like none of this is that important really. I mean, I don't see why we're fighting in the first place. Like it's not worth it. I still love you to, you know, a huge extent. We're just, you know, not exactly seeing eye to eye on this one. And I'm struggling to find my words because I do want to be tactful, but I don't, I'm having trouble finding them. You know, there's a sentiment, but I'm having trouble expressing it would be kind of like my way of, of, you know, dealing with, you know, the fights that we got into and, you know, she, she knows how tormented I am over, you know, the fact that sometimes there are things that are just very difficult to actually parse into language. You know, I'm a poet. It's been something that's been a perpetual torment, you know, that I've had to endure um, you know, as far as 
expression is concerned and it's part of what made me a poet and start being so interested in language because it's like language so often fails me you know as it does everybody else and you know there's so much there, there are so many sentiments that like we can't really seem to translate into words you know and when you run into that it it can be quite frustrating to say the least and then the anguish and then you know the the anxiety that that ends up causing is something that's kind of a perennial and constant struggle you know and i'm i'm talking about her quite a bit here but my partner has never you know agreed to a traditional relationship it's it's always been this sort of ongoing non-monogamous type situation and so the subtext of that video previously that you know i dubbed that i had to depth dive my own attraction to goss like when i come in there and, and i'm talking about uh, talking about things about how i'm not aggressively in pursuit what i mean and what isn't being said is like i'm basically set and satisfied you know so it's it's sort of like the, the the outlook that I have now towards the opposite sex is just like well you know it it it's not like I would scream and holler and be completely against inviting somebody else into my life and circumstances. I mean, ultimately, the more the merrier. I you know it, it's, that's the truth of the matter. I mean, I'm not hurting for company anymore, but I wouldn't mind having even more of it. You know. I'm I'm in that state now because of her. You know, it's like other other women are certainly still attractive, but you know, it's not like I'm hurting for their company. <laughs> you know that, that and that's the that's the ultimate truth of things. I I've, I've gotten into that state where it's just sort of like ah. Uh, you know, it's is it pass or fail? Can I take it or leave it? Sort of, you know, sentiment towards everybody else, and you know, but you know, when it comes to when it comes to gothic women, I think that it, it it's it, it's an issue of relatability ultimately. I mean, not only not only are we outsiders, but we've got kind of a similar taste in in culture and music, and you know that there is common ground that exist you know even though i'm a bit more of an ebm stan i mean the, the thing about bajas and the more traditional goths you know and, and those guys it's not really like i have a feeling of like revulsion towards them it, it's it's not like that it's just sort of a never really been my thing sort of thing but it, it's it's like if somebody were playing that stuff around me i'd be like cool you know whatever rock on so it's like your your music is not offensive to me if you're somebody that's more of a traditional band of goth. Like, I kind of got the impression that Angela Bennett might have might have been, you know. I mean, she could she could play that stuff around me. It, it really, you know, it, it wouldn't. I wouldn't think much of it or or be bothered by it, you know. So I've got a very neutral sort of sentiment towards the old, you know, goth stuff. There's no passion one way or the other as far as they're concerned but i i do have like that passionate love of synthesizers that sort of connected me to the goth you know subculture so that that's the that's the hook basically for me music wise Oh, I, I forgot to mention that like, like the birthday massacre is like one of my favorites. Although I don't know that I would, de I would necessarily classify them as like you know industrial at all. You know, they're just sort of one of those goth like aesthetic bands that is doing like synth sort of. You know, I'm definitely a huge fan of them though. I mean, if you pay any attention to the stuff that I play when, you know, I'm on other social media sites, you'll see me post them constantly. So, you know, it's it's pretty obvious that they're one of my favorites. But yeah, not, I mean, I... That was basically the subtext of me being, you know, sort of like I'm not aggressively in pursuit, but I definitely wouldn't mind seeing somebody that was part of, like, the alternative scene. It was 
sort of a, if you're interested in me and you know you find yourself you know and you know go ahead approach you know you're what you're definitely welcome it's just you know i just know and and ultimately be aware of the fact that i'm like ultimately spoken for it's just i have a partner that doesn't really give a shit you know about me seeing other people and this obviously seeing other people herself so you know and i don't mind what she does either so you know it's it's consensual it goes both ways neither of us he really wants to step on the other's relational autonomy but you know circumstances are what they are i'm i've been quite thrilled to be with the person that i'm with she's she's honestly like the like i've had a long and storied past with opposite sex and she is really kind of like if i look back on things my absolute all-time favorite i mean because look at look at things through this lens like my ex my first love and me we, we fought like a lot and before it kind of feels like it started even before the honeymoon phase was over and with Lissa, it's been a completely different experience i mean there's been a stability to our you know whatever you would call it you, you know relationship you know that that you know why do they just romantic there just isn't that sort of tension that exists in other relationships and that's just it. I mean, that, that I think basically colors the, the, the attraction to goth people in, in a huge way. And like the rationale for why I would be attracted to somebody that was goth, you know, because when I was younger, it made a lot of sense to sort of try to pursue somebody that was more traditional and was very, you know, like, doing the mainstream thing because those people were so very different than I was that, you know, at the time that was the experience that I wanted because I felt, I don't know, it was just sort of like a, I need somebody that I can't relate to that much, you know, somebody a little bit different. And, but I was 13 and I, you know, I needed to, to get that experience of seeing what was out there to really know what it was that I ultimately wanted. And now that I'm, 36 and you know looking at things through a different lens it's like you know the truth of the matter is that i i prefer the relationships where we are not each other's throats i don't like being you know the, my partner's punching bag i don't like fighting with them constantly and you know like angela bennett benedict or who i'm thinking of like has a lot of issues with drugs and you know i stop touching mdma like a number of years prior i haven't touched it in years you know i quit i'm completely sober and have been for a long time and and you know the 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 reason why i mean it's kind of lame though it wasn't you know it, it, it was just kind of like you know people are spending an enormous amount of money on drugs and you know i see what people are doing and it's like this capital could be better ultimately invested in stock and bonds or something you know like an actual investment and i kind of just you know i was like you know i did i enjoyed using it for the short spurt of time that i used it i'm not really looking back on that time with extreme regret but you know the one thing that i am feeling about it is sort of uh you know that money could have been better spent invested in something and it probably ultimately would have made me happier You know, really, the, the truth of the matter is that the fast friends that I found on that stuff disappeared pretty quickly and were a very ephemeral phenomenon, which was really disappointing because, you know, the way that it felt was not so ephemeral, but the way that people that were experiencing my mood when I was under it, like, they filtered in and out and, you know, walked in and out of my life and left me with, you know sort of emotional scars as a result of that experience and you know i miss them basically and i don't talk to them anymore because they won't talk to me so i you know that, that was the sort of thing and that was the that was basically the subtext of everything i mean we are we are outsiders, you know, and it, it, it's, it's, it's ultimately not, it's not just that, that, but we're, you know, we're on the outside of the culture in sort of the same way.
you know. So we, we you know, we, we we hail on certain, you know, similar wavelengths, even if we don't fully listen to the same exact types of music. I'm more of an EBM sort of person and you know, not everything I listen to strictly falls into that category though. 